Hi, I'm Brian Curry, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, taxonomy. Taxonomy is the classification of things, living things. Taxonomy, as you know, it started in the 18th century with Carolus Linnaeus and a system of binomial nomenclature. You can dissect that word if you like. Bi, to, nom, name, nomenclature, naming. Two name system of naming. You might ask, why did he do this? Well, not everyone speaks French, or Spanish, or Dutch, or whatever. If you need to communicate with a scientist who speaks a language that you don't really speak, you get out of trouble unless you refer to any type of critter with this particular system. Like if you called up a French guy and you don't really speak French, and you say, well, I discovered this really cool thing in the fish of jelly. And the guy would go, mon dieu, because there's no such thing as a fish made of gelatin. Okay, I don't speak French. But anyway, yes, you could simply use the binomial nomenclature system and tell him jellyfish without actually having to speak French. This is an example of the system in use, Felis domesticus, if you will, the common house cat. The system uses the genus first and then the species. What are these? Well, these are just groupings. You see, taxonomy takes a bunch of different groupings, starting with the least specific, if you will, the one that encompasses the most number of living things, to the most specific, the one that encompasses only one living thing. You start out at the kingdom, the most specific, drop down to phylum, then class, order, family, genus, and finally species. When you get down to species, there's only one thing you can refer to, and that is the actual species itself. As you can see, the system of binomial nomenclature uses the two most specific groupings. All right, let's talk about the kingdoms. When Carolus Linnaeus was inventing a system, we had only two kingdoms, plants and animals. Now we tend to work with five, and those are animalia, animals, multicellular eukaryotes that are heterotrophic. They go and catch their food. Planting, plants, multicellular, eukaryotic, and these all perform photosynthesis. Fungi, multicellular, eukaryotic, these ones are heterotrophic, but they absorb their food as opposed to catch it. They usually grow out of it and then just take it in. Protista, these are the unicellular eukaryotes. How they get their food? Many different ways. Some are photosynthetic, some are not, some produce chemicals, all sorts of different ways to get their food. And finally, monera, the unicellular prokaryotes. Now, this is, if you will, a work in progress. Some offer the eight kingdom system, some offer the domain system. Now, the domain system puts in an extra three domains. I think it's the most workable. The domain is, if you will, a really big kingdom. It's a super kingdom. And this is how it works. The three, the three domains are, first off, eukarya. This contains anything that's a eukaryote. In other words, animalia, plantae, fungi, and protista all jump under eukarya. So that leaves one kingdom, but we're actually going to split up monera. Forget it ever existed. We're splitting it into bacteria and archaea. That's because we've discovered that there are big evolutionary differences between some of the newer bacteria and archaic bacteria, the really old bacteria that existed when Earth was still very angry and very young. The lesson really to be taken away is that things are changing and that this will not remain set. After all, there are now more than just animals and plants, and we'll keep going as we discover more things. Of course, you may ask, how do we go along with this? How, how does this even come about? Well, let me show you. Right now, we started using cladograms. These show the evolutionary development of different creatures, different plants, so on and so forth. We used to do it simply through anatomical or visual similarities, but that has changed recently. Take, for instance, the American and African vultures. They're both vultures. They look very alike if you put them side by side. But the American vulture is actually more closely related to the stork. They both urinate on their legs to cool themselves off. I know, great habit. But anyway, yes, that's genetics. Platograms show evolutionary divergence. And they use these things called homologies, if you will, similar traits, similar growth, similar structures. Do not confuse these with homoplasies. Homoplasies are similar structures that perform the similar functions, but are created differently. Take, for instance, the bat wing. It is used for flying, yes, but it is made mostly of muscle. Compare this to the insect wing. This is made of almost no muscle at all, but is also used for flying. That's a homoplasy. Same structure, same function, made out of different stuff. Don't use those. All right, now we're going to make a cladogram. You may have to do this, actually, in class. Hopefully, your teacher will just show them to you, but either way, you'll understand it. All right, so
So here we have our taxons, if you will, the things we're going to put in the cladogram. And here we have the things we're going to actually look at. Jaw, skeleton, lungs, feathers, fur, mammary glands. Okay, first off, lamprey. Jaws? No jaws. Fish? Most fish have jaws. Reptiles, birds, mammals. Yes, pluses for those that actually do have jaws. Now, these are very general categories. Usually you'll work with something a little more specific. Usually you'll have more specific things to go by. Those are for biologists who have a lot of time to research and really know what they're doing. Those are taxonomists. We're just high school biologists. We're going to work with this. All right, skeleton, lab race, no skeleton, fish, yes, skeleton, reptile, skeleton, bird, skeleton, mammal, skeleton. Okay, lungs, lab race, no lungs, fish, no lungs, reptiles, lungs, birds, lungs, mammals, lungs, feathers, lab race, don't have feathers, ha <laughs> ha, fish, no feathers, reptiles, no feathers, birds, feathers, mammals, no feathers, okay, furs, lab race, don't have furs, fish, no fur, reptiles, no fur, birds, no fur, mammals, fur. Finally, mammary glands. No, 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 yes. Okay, with this data we can actually construct a cladogram. We start out with the common ancestor at the bottom, since everything we believe has a common ancestor. And our first splitting point, jaws. Right here, lampreys branch off. And we continue our main little fork. Skeleton. Well, no changes here. These four, they have a skeleton. We might just mark it in, though. Next branch is lungs. When we hit lungs, fish don't have lungs, so they branch off. I may run out of room here, so I may have to erase some of this. Okay. Back to lungs. We're going to continue around here. Remember, this is fish. We keep branching up. Our next fork, feathers. Okay. Here's something we need to look at. Because birds have feathers, mammals have fur. They don't really intersect. So what we're going to do, we're first going to branch off reptiles. Reptiles don't have eyes. And then we're going to do a two-way fork. See, we're going to put mammals on this side with fur, and we're going to put birds on this side with feathers. Now, birds do not continue to have any extra things. So we're just going to put them right there. And finally, mammary glands. And we're going to end with mammals. All right, and that's what a cladogram will look like if you kind of just shift that over there. Sorry I ran out of room, but it'll look a lot like a tree. Okay, to recap, taxonomy is the classification of living things. It started with Carolus Linnaeus, who invented the system of binomial nomenclature, so scientists who spoke different languages could communicate about living things. The system uses first the genus and then the species in that order, such as in Felis domesticus or the common house cat. The current system we're using for taxonomy uses five kingdoms and gets more specific as you go down. Kingdom is the least specific, and then you go to phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, which is the most specific. Five kingdom system is the kingdom Animalia, multicellular, eukaryote, heterotrophic, plantae, multicellular, eukaryote, photosynthetic, fungi, multicellular, eukaryotic, absorb food, protista, unicellular eukaryotes, and finally monera, unicellular prokaryotes. There are some new systems being suggested, such as the eight kingdom system and the three domain system. Domains are super kingdoms, if you will. The three domains, eukarya, which includes all eukaryotes, bacteria, new bacteria, and archaea, ancient bacteria. We form these groupings through evolutionary differences, which we can show on a cladogram. This uses homologies, structures that are the same and serve the same function. Do not use homoplasies, though. These are similar. The structures will perform similar functions but the overall workings, how they are made, are usually different. We can construct a cladogram based on different criteria, such as jaw, skeleton, lungs, feathers, fur, so on and so forth, evolved traits, if you will. And moving along the cladogram, every time we can eliminate a certain taxon because it did not evolve a trait, we simply create a branch and put it there. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.